are standing in the familiar streets of your neighborhood, witnessing Giv's serene world change suddenly into a scene of chaos. You look around, and the scene around you has morphed from calm to threatening. Winds escalate into furious roars, and before you know it, you are surrounded by the winds. This is not a scene from a dystopian novel. It's the reality that many people endured in 2023 as they were encountering 78 hurricanes worldwide. But hurricanes were not the only climate incident that was intensified by climate change. In fact, there were many others. The Amazon River faced an unprecedented drought last year. Water levels dropped to those that we have never seen before since 121 years. But this was not all. We also had the uh, Seattrian storm in Europe, which impacted not only many people's lives, but also broke a record in Flensburg, Germany, where many people lost lives, but also had their uh, communities shattered. So recent events show us now more than ever that climate change is not a distant threat. It's happening now and everywhere, impacting our lives in profoundest of ways. But just as our challenges with climate change are evolving, so is our potential and progress made towards the field of quantum computation, an area that holds promise in transforming our battle against climate change. Let's demystify quantum computing. Traditional computers like the ones you and I use for our daily tasks operate on bits. These bits can be thought of as the simplest unit of data that our computers can handle. They operate uh, based on a binary system, meaning that they can be either zeros or ones, just like how your coin can be either heads or tails. It is this binary nature that limits our computers the most because it causes our computers to become, in a way, ineffective when it comes to handling vast solution spaces or, challenge, uh, or challenging problems where we have a lot of data. And this is because they process information step by step rather than all at once. Now, our quantum computers, on the other hand, they utilize quantum bits or qubits. These are fundamentally different to our traditional bits because they can be in a superposition of zero and one. And what that means is just like how our coins can be spinning in mid-air and not have a predetermined outcome of either being heads or tails, our qubits function in the same way. So as we flip this coin and we have essentially a combination of both heads and tails, this is how our qubits also function. And this allows us to have a lot more computational efficiency because it means that a certain qubit can perform two calculations at once. Now, two calculations may not seem impressive, but then let's consider another quantum property. This is called entanglement. Entanglement occurs when we have a qubit that mirrors exactly the behavior of another qubit. So imagine that I'm a qubit, and if I do this weird hand movement, and I have an entangled version of me, that version is also going to do the same movement, no matter the distance that is between us. So I could be on Earth, and that entangled version can be in Mars, and they would still follow the same motion together instantaneously. Now, how does this help us with computation? Well, it makes our qubits perform multiple calculations in tandem. Let's consider the possibility of entangling two qubits. If we have entangled two qubits, we are going to get two to the power of two or four calculations. Now, four calculations may not seem so impressive, so let's consider the possibility of 100,000 entangled qubits. This would be two to the power of 100,000 calculations, and essentially, to put this number into perspective, two to the power of 32 is a billion. So just imagine what we could do with two to the power of 100,000 calculations. This computational leap in our abilities is is about tackling problems at a, not only a faster speed, but also in a way that is beyond the reach of our current traditional computers. But you might be thinking, and very rightfully, how does this help us with climate change? Well, when it comes to climate change, our computational capabilities are crucial. 
So quantum computers essentially help us in two distinct areas. They help us in the realm of optimization and simulation. When it comes to simulations, we can divide the problem into either large-scale simulations or small-scale simulations for the scope of this talk. So when we're considering large-scale simulations, we can talk about replicating our planet in the digital world. This would be the digital twin Earth, and its goal would be to monitor and run simulations on both natural and human activities that can impact our planet. It would help us with forecasting the effect that having such a um, combination um, on our planet, and it would enable us to develop a prediction for the effect that our uh, challenges will have. So, for example, we could use this for cases like uh, sea level changes or for enhancing our decisions when it comes to cases like the carbon capture technology and also our urban heat planning. Now, all of this sounds promising, but when it comes to implementing such a solution in the real world, our problem is going to be how are we going to handle this much of data? And this is exactly what our uh, current computers cannot help us with. But it's also something that our quantum computers can enable us to work with. And that is what the European Space Agency, in fact, tried in 2020. It employed a solution where the digital twin Earth was made with the help of quantum com uh, computation and machine learning. And some of the precursors of their projects were in the area of creating Antarctica twins so that we would be able to monitor sea level changes and the effect they would have on floods. Other projects have also focused on the impact of uh, the climate disasters that we have, as well as predicting the exact location where they would occur and the exact timing as well. So while this technology is still in its infancy, it holds with itself the potential to transform our fight against climate change. And it holds uh, and it empowers us with the ability to de develop better solutions as well. Now, when our computers fall short with large-scale simulations, they also fall short when it comes to small-scale simulations at a molecular level. This would be the case, for example, with the creation of fuel technologies or alternative fuels, as well as carbon capture. And in the development of all these technologies, our understanding of molecules is going to be crucial. And that is exactly what we need to do in order to harness the properties of these molecules. We need to be aware of their properties. And this requires an understanding of electrons and the way they interact with each other within the molecule. The challenge, however, is that when we have a lot of molecules to deal with, we also have a lot of electrons. And industrially uh, used molecules are also quite large. So we are dealing with a lot of electrons whose properties we need to examine. And this is something that our current computers cannot do because they require ex uh, equations in quantum mechanics in order to predict properties. But this is something that is computationally difficult, so we rely on approximations. These approximations are helpful because they give us a head start, but they are also very inaccurate when it comes to practical predictions. And this is when we are going to use quantum computers because quantum computers are complementary to our qubits and our electrons. So these computers employ qubits and these qubits have exactly the same properties as the electrons, so they can be mapped directly to them. And if you have multiple qubits entangled together, they are going to also be directly mapped to those electrons, allowing us to simulate how these electrons are going to interact with each other. Where do we see applications of this in climate change? Well, this can be used in metal organic frameworks, which are involved in ca uh, carbon capture technology and uh, absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. The exact problem with MOFs is that we do not exactly know how they absorb carbon dioxide. 
and it's something that requires a quantum mechanical level of understanding of our molecules, which is what we could do with our quantum computers. Now there is also the realm of optimization and quantum computers can also revolutionize optimization for climate change. So one particular application is the use of these um, quantum computers for vehicle routing optimization where we try to determine the most optimal path to get to a certain destination. And this involves a lot of variables because we need to maximize the um, fuel efficiency as well as the amount of time that we are on the, uh, the road. We need to reduce that and we also need to make sure that the cost is effective and reduced. So this is something that involves a lot of variables and is something that our traditional computers fail to do. But that's when we can rely on our quantum computers to help us with the computational complexity that arises when we have multiple variables. And finding the best route to get to a certain de uh, destination is in fact very important for climate change because it enables us to find and reduce how we can um, have a minimized CO2 emission as well as the greenhouse gas effect uh, that arises as a result of these emissions. In another application, we also can examine the potential for using optimization for packaging. Figuring out what dimension and size of packages we must use in transportation of goods is essential in reducing the amount of uh, space inefficiency that we have when we are transferring a good from a certain location. And this enhanced capacity is going to enable us to reduce the number of vehicles that we use and therefore reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. So as you can see, the potential applications of quantum computation in tackling climate change are boundless, but that is because climate change itself is a multifaceted issue such that we need to utilize and um, utilize multiple solutions and also become creative about the way we approach the entire problem. Which is why I would like to encourage you to think about different ways you can apply this in various fields because quantum computation is an interdisciplinary field and so is our interactions with the environment. Every field has interactions with the environment because environment is essentially everywhere and we are all going to be involved in nurturing this quantum future. So I would like to end this talk by, uh, with a question that goes beyond the confines of this uh, event, which is what role are you going to play in nurturing this quantum future? Our, our futures are not only unfolding, they're also being reshaped by our constant decisions, choices, and our actions. And as we approach the future, I encourage you to imagine new possibilities so that when someone looks up at the sky in the future, they're not going to do so in worry. Thank you.